consolidation was the mainstay of the freight hauling fleet on the Boston and Maine from 1901 until 1920. Because they were so good at their task and not as flashy as the varnish, they are generally considered the unsung heroes of the Boston and Maine. Even after larger, more famous freight haulers arrived, they continued their work on local freights, branch lines, and road switching service. If it can be said that the S, T, and R classes were the showboats of freight service on the Boston and Maine, then it should definitely be said that the K class consolidations kept the red ink off the ledgers for quite a long time. Although our focus will mainly be on the K7 and K8 consolidations, which became the most famous on the Boston and Maine, it's worth mentioning the earlier machines that the railroad had as well. The B&M inherited nine 280 consolidations from the Fitchburg Railroad when they inherited that railroad. These were all built by Taunton or Rhode Island in the late 1880s and had 20 by 24 cylinders. They belonged to the classes K2, K4E, A, C, and D, and were all scrapped by 1928. In addition to the Fitchburg Railroad locomotives, the Boston and Maine also had a number of 280s that they purchased directly from Schenectady in 1901 and 1902. These were the classes K5 with the subclasses A, B, and C, and the K6 consolidations. The K6s were different than the K5s in that they had 22 and 35 by 32 cylinders, as opposed to the 20 by 30 cylinders on the K5s. The Boston and Maine had 10 of the K6s, far fewer than the K5s, and the K6s were all scrapped in the 1920s and 1930s, like the K5s. However, four of the K6 consolidations were actually sold secondhand to other railroads. Three locomotives were sold to the St. Johnsbury and Lake Champlain Railroad. Additionally, number 2353 was sold to the Montpelier and Wells River and became their number 21 in 1935. The Boston and Maine's K7 consolidations were all built by Schenectady in 1906 and 1907 and later in 1910 and 1911. These engines had 20 by 30 cylinders and belonged to the K7 and K7A classes. Nine of the K7s would later be sold to Vermont Short Lines secondhand. The St. Johnsbury and Lake Champlain received five locomotives. The Montpelier and Wells River Railroad received three locomotives. Finally, the Berry and Chelsea Railroad of Vermont received number 2412, which became their number 22 in 1946. The B&M's K8 consolidations were more numerous and more powerful than the other versions, and came in three batches. The K8As were constructed in 1911 by Baldwin and were later redesignated the K8Ds. The K8Bs were constructed in 1913 by both Baldwin and Schenectady. And finally, the K8Cs were constructed in 1916 by Brooks. The final class of K8 consolidations, the K8Cs, were unique in that they had larger tenders than the other classes. It's also worth noting that a few of the K8 consolidations, specifically the K8Bs, were sold to the Bangor and Aroostook Railroad in 1946. Specifically, these were number 2684, which became Bangor and Aroostook number 196, and number 2692, which became Bangor and Aroostook number 197. These locomotives didn't last very long in the BAR, as very soon that railroad dieselized. The Boston and Maine did with the 280 what they did with their other classes, buying light machines and gradually upgrading them as new advancements became available, superheating and feed water heaters being among the prime examples. This is not to say that all of Boston and Maine's consolidations were superheated or had a feed water heater, because this is not the case. A number of the K8s were outfitted and modernized with feed water heaters, a rather ingenious device which takes steam from the cylinders and uses it to preheat water from the tender before inserting it into the boiler, therefore making the temperature of the water more consistent and improving the efficiency of the thermodynamics of a steam locomotive. 
The type of feed water heater used on the K8s was an Alesco type, a cylindrical device mounted in front of the smokestack. The name Alesco comes from the company name, Locomotive Superheater Company, LS Co., therefore Alesco. The Boston and Main's placement of the Worthington heater was also somewhat unusual, it being on the right side as opposed to a more conventional left side, although the maintenance crews held that they were no more difficult to pipe to that location. In an experiment to improve tractive effort and hauling capacity of the already powerful K8 consolidations, two units were updated with tender boosters in 1930 for trials. They were also outfitted with interesting shields on the pilots, which held equipment for the trials. Unfortunately, the boosters were not long for the world, when it was found that, with empty tenders, the engines experienced far too much inconvenient wheel slip. Another experiment was tried with brakemen's doghouses on the tenders. A few of the K8s had them at one time. Apparently, the head-end brakemen took a dim view of them, and they were soon removed. The problem was solved by elongating the cab some 15 inches to accommodate the extra man. That seemed to settle matters to everyone's liking. Another experiment was the addition of a McClellan water tube boiler on K8B number 2648. Indeed, the February 1913 builder's photo from Baldwin shows this unique look to number 2648. After seven years in operation, she would be rebuilt to resemble the rest of her class. Although the consolidations on the Boston and Maine were mostly used for freight service and often are considered freight locomotives, it would be incorrect to say that they never hauled passenger trains. Both the K7 and the K8s did. In fact, the K7 consolidations, which were lighter than the K8s, very frequently hauled passenger trains, namely on the Lexington branch and the Stoneham branch. In fact, the grade into Stoneham, Massachusetts was significant enough to often require the use of a 280 consolidation instead of the use of a lighter engine like a 260 mogul, although moguls were used into Stoneham as well. Indeed, the very last consolidation in service on the Boston and Maine, number 2403, a K7, was often used on the Stoneham trains and other passenger trains in the 1950s. She was finally scrapped in 1955. The Boston and Maine went on a scrapping spree in the late 1930s, scrapping a large number of their numerous K8s and some of their K7 consolidations, and when World War II arrived, found themselves in quite a fix, power short. The consolidations operated into the late 1940s and the early 1950s, but the arrival of diesel locomotives quickly supplemented the aging steam locomotives and they found themselves brought out to Billerica, Massachusetts and lined up at the North Billerica shops, pulled apart for scrap. The very last K8 consolidations were cut up for scrap in 1954, and the final 280 on the Boston and Maine, number 2403, saw its end in 1955. Too early to be saved for preservation. Unfortunately, to the chagrin of many Boston and Maine steam enthusiasts, not a single B&M 280 consolidation survives into the modern era. Though they represent an earlier time when the 280 consolidation was the pinnacle of freight hauling technology on the American Railroad, the consolidations, the tall and somewhat graceful K7s, and the stocky, more brutish looking K8s, hold a special place in the history of the Boston and Maine and in the hearts of those who care about the road. Like their 260 counterparts, they held on to the bitter end of steam operations on the Boston and Maine, fulfilling roles that had been set for them by that thrifty Yankee Railroad. And although there's certainly those of us who would picture a lima or a mountain when it comes to picturing the quintessential image of steam-powered freight on the Boston and Maine, there's no doubt scores of us that think about a consolidation.